Welcome to this game of Zero K. I'm Dan Hume, your commentator. Uh, we're playing on a uh, very silly map here. There's there's only one starting metal point, and it's a 4v4 game. It's a very small map, so I, I don't expect this is going to last very long. Uh, as you can see, uh, the the Northwestern players, that's Team One, have uh, all chosen their factories. We have uh, Burp in the north, who's gone for airplanes. We have Skazi, who has gone for Plokibots. We have Ivory King in the yellow, uh, with an interestingly named commander who's gone for jump jets. And Fred has also gone for jump jets. Uh, so that's an, an interesting mix of units there. Uh, in the southeast, on the other hand, we have Moj, who has gone for light vehicles. We have Forever, who has gone for cloaky bots. We have Sabia, who's gone for gunships. And we have Sheep, who's gone for planes. So the South has uh, both a plane and a gunship user. Um, but we'll see what difference the two gunship players, uh, sorry, the two jump jet players make in the Northwest. Um, the first scouting units are starting to move forward, so we'll see how this goes on. Scouting out to see if anybody's taking these uh, southern mass points yet. Ah. And uh, a bit of good harassment here from Glaive, but getting too close to Sabia there. Manages to take out uh, a wind generator, but uh, and the, the defender of course, but not much else. Um, still, that's a, a, a good bit of harassment and uh, a good way to, to keep your opponent busy in the early game. Also, some uh, some air scouting and combat going on. Uh, Burp already has uh, a vamp on the field, but it's uh, it's getting mobbed currently by uh, by several Avengers. But manages to make it back to base to be repaired just fine. See the first scythe is coming out here. Uh, uh, looks likely to harass this uh, this metal extractor here. Yep. So it's uh, a quick hit and run job, and then it uh, well, it would just get to cloak again very quickly, but uh, was overflown by an Avenger, which decloaked it, and it's cloaked again now. Just needs to run away. Um, if we look at the uh, the pathfinding view, we can see that only the the very steepest part of these cliffs are uh, impassable to bots. Um, however. Almost, almost all of these slopes are uh, impassable to vehicles, so that will uh, definitely affect the strategy of this game. Um, first scuttle coming out here in a uh, well, not quite in an ambush position yet, but it's it's moving into position now. Um, so a bit of pork going on. So two cloaked glaives here. Oh, sorry, two cloaked skies here. They're um, rushing around menacingly. Uh, a few more planes coming out on this side of the map, but uh, getting quite close to the defenders. Not a very good shot from the um, from the napalm bomber there. Just about manages to hit Sabia, but doesn't do too much damage. Um, it'll be back out again after a few moments. So, uh, just like the scythes came out for Team 2, now a jack is coming out for Team 1. Jacks are, are very hard, uh, and their jump jets allow them to uh, attack much more rapidly than the scythes, though of course they don't have the cloak. Oh, you see this one just waltzing through this, uh, this small fortification and then jumping away, not quite to safety as it's still stuck at the top of the cliff there. The jack, because it's uh, not quite a bot, uh, has kind of the same pathing as a bot, but very much struggling on the, the steeper section there. And manages to get away to safety. Uh, Scuttle comes in and some puppies as well, so that could make some very interesting play on this side of the map. 
Meanwhile, not much going on in the northeast. Uh, uh, a hammer nearly taking down this defender, and the next shot I expect will do it if it's on target. Yep. Um, and a few defenders going up on this side of the map, but a Black Dawn comes out, and that's going to be a real problem for Skazi here. Burp really needs to get his vamp into play. Um, the, there is no anti-air apart from apart from the vamp on the map. Black Dawn's still looking around for a target. It's down to about two thirds health, uh, about half health. Nearly managing to kill Burp there with its its D gun attack. And a second one does the job. That's Burp's commander down. The vamp down as well, this is now big trouble. Um, especially now the Black Dawn has a vamp escort, but it's coming back to base to get repaired. It's it's very badly damaged, but it will live to fight another day. Uh, meanwhile, on this side of the map, uh, all of the fortifications are gone. Jack's still pressing forward, but uh, uh, an Impaler also pushing forward on that side, but now having to run away. Uh, Ivory King moving his commander a bit too far forward there into trouble. And the Avengers come out to, to deal with it. But they get too close to the Razor's Kiss, which itself... Oh. Razor's Kiss is um, unprotected by any land defense, so there's a Lotus going up over here, so these uses will be able to uh, take care of it. Uh, especially if it keeps opening the way it does to attack our units. Um, Razor's Kisses, of course, have a defense bonus while they're closed up, but as soon as they they open and start firing, that goes away right away. That said, a Cloak Jethro is doing some very good scouting here, right in the middle of the, the, the southeastern space. Uh... I'm not sure what needs to be taken care of, but it obviously has. Um, an extra cloaky bot factory here coming out for Burp, though. Uh, he's in serious trouble after the loss of his commander. None of these, yeah, none of these rectors are his. He has no builders at all at the moment. Oh, of course, he would be having cranes, not rectors anyway. And there are no cranes on the map, so he has no, no structure build capacity at the moment. There's no way this factory is getting finished off. However, the Black Dawn comes out again. Um... There are sides about to destroy Fred's commander as well. Oh, one more hit should do it. And yes, commander goes down. So it's looking very bad for the Northeasterners. They've lost two commanders. Um, this Black Dawn is still pretty unopposed, though there are, um, there's a Jethro here scaring it away to, to come in and get repaired again. Burp says we lose to Ur, but it's not just to Ur, it's only the Northerners who are losing to Ur. The Southern Frontier is uh, mostly being lost to uh, to Jax. Um, to Sky, rather, the, the, the Jax being the, the, the units that are coming from the jump jet plant. Um, a Scuttle coming out here. Oh. Ah, there's a jump jet plant on the south now as well. That's very interesting. The, um, yeah. The light vehicle plant has gone away. Oh. Completely missed that there. The Northern is trying to uh, attack while Moja's commander is there. Lots of puppies coming in. Of course, they have their, the Grey Goo ability, so they'll be hugely benefiting from all of this, uh, all of this wreckage on the battlefield. Scuttle going off there, but uh, not really, uh, not really doing much. Puppies, even in their larger numbers, not able to get close to Forever's commander. Um, and another scuttle goes off. I think that took out the Jack, but I didn't quite see what was going on there. Um, Forever's commander on less than half health now, but uh, he has Mojas in front of it. And Team One is now thinking of resigning. It is looking very bad for them. And uh, now being pillaged as well, sorry, impaled rather than pillaged. Um, with that uh, very long range artillery unit. 
going for the Razor's Kiss, which of course has its defense bonus while it's closed, as I mentioned earlier, but uh, not quite that accurate yet. Uh, obviously firing off radar. Oh, and changing targets as well. Oh, Freaker's jumping there to, to do some repairs. That's uh, pretty good. And that's it. Team 1 has thrown in the towel. As I expected, that was a, a pretty short game, and it was the, the early use of Jax in the south and the, uh, the, the fast Black Dawn in the north that, uh, that took that out.